morning, everybody. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're doing well. And I certainly miss getting together with you and spending time with you at church. But I'm glad that we get to do this via uh, social media and this online platform. So thank you so much for taking the time to listen. I want you to take your Bibles, if you would, this morning. Go to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 4. And I'm going to read the entire chapter. I know we have just a few minutes together here this morning, but I want to take the time to read this because I believe it's important. The Bible says, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath. If they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore rest to the people of God. For he that entereth into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works and God from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there a creature that is manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I want you to go back with me to verse number 9, where the Bible tells us, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. You know, we're dealing with this uh, COVID-19 virus and everybody's, uh, you know, it's been a few weeks now. And and I promise you that it's a lot like at my home, like it is at your home. The walls are getting closer and, you know, we're sometimes getting agitated. To be honest with you, we're filling our mind with things that are often put in front of us, uh, maybe through social media or through the news. And, and uh, you know, we can become short, we can become... Uh, fearful. We can get ourselves worked up, if you will. But the Lord reminds us here in Proverbs chapter number four and verse nine, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. The Lord wants us to find rest in him. And I want to encourage you this morning to, if you will, just set aside all the things that are going on. My wife and I were just talking recently and we said, you know, we have to be careful about what we fill our minds with, not just in this circumstance. We have to be careful about that all the time. But when we have this situation where we're kind of at home and, and we're spending a lot more time at home than maybe we normally are, and we're getting information constantly and we're wanting to know information constantly, it's easy to allow the wrong kind of information or information that's not necessarily helpful or healthy to fill our minds, and and it robs us of our rest. I know I'm guilty of it often. We become so worked up and so concerned about what's going on that we're robbed of the rest that God desires for us to have. He reminds us in this passage that the Lord spoke the world into existence in six days, and on the seventh day, He rested. God desires for us to rest. 
You know, sometimes when we think about rest and we think about uh, the, the word sleep or we think about getting some sleep. But, you know, you can sleep and wake up in the morning and not feel like you've rested. To the Christian, our rest comes from one place. It comes from the Lord. The Bible reminds us at the, at the latter part of Hebrews chapter number four here. He says, here's where our rest is found. Look in verse number 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Let me encourage you with this, church family. You can always find rest in knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. He said, let us hold fast our profession. You can find rest in your profession of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you with this. If you don't know the Lord today, the Bible tells us that today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. You will never experience true rest, true peace, until you first know Jesus Christ as Savior. Secondly, look in verse number 15. He says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. We not only find rest in our profession of Jesus Christ, but we find rest in the power of God. Aren't you thankful? The Bible says here, listen, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. You know, we're dealing with a circumstance that's out of our control. And if we're not careful, we can allow it to overwhelm us. And the Bible says that God knows exactly what we are going through. He knows exactly what we're dealing with. The Bible says in this passage, specifically in the context, that he was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. Aren't you glad we serve a God that is able to overcome? There's no God like the God of the Bible. There's no God like the God that we have placed our faith and trust in. The Bible says all things were created by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Aren't you thankful for the power of God, the power to overcome? And then the Bible tells us that we find rest finally in verse number 16 here. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in time of need. Boy, this is certainly a great time of need, and many people are trying to run to many different places. Today, our parking lot is open to folks who are coming with a great need to, uh, for food. They're needing food, and the United Way is here, and, and they've asked if they can use our parking lot. And people are lining up and driving through to meet a need. But can I say to you, there'll they'll come a moment when the food that they've picked up today will run out, and that need will still be present. Can I tell you that we can always come to the Lord no matter where we are, what we're dealing with or what we go, we're going through. We can always find help. I said just a moment ago, Watchman Nee said this, our help comes from one place. It comes from the Lord. But he also said that carnal Christians have a hard time finding rest because their rest is often found in their work. And they work so much and they have to work and continue to work to feel like they're accomplishing something. But I'm thankful that as a child of God, that I can find rest in one place, and that is Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you with this, church. Find your rest in the Lord. Come to Him in your time of need. And the Lord says, you'll find help. You can remind yourself of the decision that you've made to receive Jesus Christ as Savior. And you can find rest in knowing Jesus Christ. You can find great peace in knowing that no matter what comes our way, God is greater. Aren't you thankful we serve a God that is greater than anything we'll ever face? He says, find that rest. I want to encourage you to rest in the Lord. Find your rest, your peace in Jesus Christ. Thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you're doing well. I want you to know that I'm praying for you all. I miss you greatly. And I look forward to seeing you again to gather in the house of God very soon. It's going to be a great day. I hope you're looking forward to it. God bless you.